admitted narcissist deluxe so if we had three hours I would probably sit here and go yeah you know what once upon a time I was doing this thing and it was all about me <laughs> now I'll give you guys a little backstory because nobody knows who I am um, I was raised in East Texas uh, in 1982 Navy moved me to Washington State and I just stayed there so I've been in Washington State since June of 82 and I never left. I wouldn't go back home for four reasons. Heat, humidity, bugs, and snakes. Because <laughs> in Texas, there are big bugs. Uh, June bug season, the worst. You guys have June bugs? Yes. Yeah, yeah June bugs, the little brown beetles. Well, they're actually pretty good size. Like a dime size, maybe a nickel. And they fly around and they get in your hair and stuff. It's, it's really unpleasant. So I didn't go back home. Um, I was on submarines for six years. A lot of people don't know that about me. I told people, I was like, yeah, I was in the Navy once, and they're like, oh my God. And I'm like, it's not that shocking. It's the Navy. But I was on submarine sonar tech on uh, the big boats, the Ohio class, that are built right over here on the coast. And uh, when I got out of the Navy, I was an idiot. <laughs> I mean, you make E6 in five years. I don't know if you know what that means, but it's really good. That's a pace like beyond belief. And then you go, well, I'm 24 years old, it's 1987, and I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> oh, dummy. I could have retired when I was 38. But anywho, enough about me. No. <laughs> Instead of just telling every single story I have, I'll just let you guys fire some questions and let's see what we get going. I may ask you questions. Go ahead. Um, so yesterday you said your favorite voice to do was Meowser because they had no idea of what they wanted. Have you had <laughs> anything that you had a specific voice that you wanted to do but the people that said no? No. Uh, <laughs> Actually not, no. Um, yeah, the story came out yesterday about Meowser, um, 3D World, they, I go in there, I've got my scripts, and we're doing the regular, you know, running, short jumps, long jumps, hops, you know, all this falling down on your face, you know, all these things, bleh, you know, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> or, yeah, the, the dreaded, the dreaded really long ones, where you're like, <laughs> Then they'll be all like, uh, well, now do that again, but wetter. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, do, you go through a two hour session, I'll go through like four or five of these. Wow. And not just to make it sound wetter, 
it's just to help not die. <laughs> but uh, it, I started throwing, you probably heard it, I hope you could hear it, the, uh, this false vibrato kind of thing when he's falling. It's, it's all, he starts off like, and it starts going, and I'll do that again when. <laughs> See, oh, back to the Meowser thing. The Meowser story, some of you may not have heard this because you weren't here yesterday, but we'll find out. Stop me if you've heard this. Uh, Meowser, I'm standing there, got the script, turn the page, and I see Meowser. And I laughed. I was like, Meowser, that's funny. What does it mean? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, it's a, he's going to be a cat Bowser. It's kind of a power-up thing. And I went, all right, what's it supposed to sound like? They go, we don't know. <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh. Yeah. Now here's where voice acting gets really bizarre, because they do that to you. They go, hey, well, we want you to do this thing, and we don't know what it's going to be. So you're just like, uh, let me just make up something. So what I did was uh, a combination I don't know, kind of a wildcat sound, best you, best you could. I mean, if you, if, you, if you think of like the typical cougar sound effect or something, you know, like that kind of thing, and then do on top of it. So you go like and then go. <laughs> the story continues, right? This was a, a weekend session. Now this was this was the session for 3D work. I got to do a little bit of that to picture. There was some of the cutscenes. I don't get to see cutscenes very often when I'm recording. They just say, well, this is what's happening, and so do that. Uh, well, what do you want me to do? I think like, we don't know. Back to the same story. <laughs> Go around in circles with me a lot, especially with this much caffeine. <laughs> so anyway, where was I? I was in Paris, France. <laughs> no. Oh man. Uh, what was I talking about? Meowser. Meowser again. Oh god, yeah, it's a long story of Meowser. <laughs> the uh, it was a weekend session. I recorded most of it, all the Mauser stuff went on Friday, I think it was. And so I had the weekend, and then Monday, I gotta go back in there. Well, by the end of Friday, you, you, you can taste blood by the time you're done with two hours of Bowser. And not, not like, it's not like you're eating it or you know swallowing it or anything weird. It's just like, like if you took a, a real penny not the ones that they have now, which, you know. If you have a piece of copper, and it's aged enough, and you put it in your mouth and you go, mm, 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 mm. that's what it tastes like in the back of your throat. It's like a copper oxide kind of thing, this taste. So that's when I know that I'm starting to get to the point where I should stop. But anyway, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tear it apart. I go, come back Monday, I walk into the Red Room at Bad Animal Studio in uh, Seattle, and I sat down in the control room at the desk, and I said, what about the Meowser stuff? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> the producer looks at me and he goes, well, we're, we're uh, translating uh, an email from Japan right now. And I was like, okay. I'm just scared, you know, like I don't want to do it again. I didn't think I had the voice to be able to pull it off again without waiting for about a week. Um, and then finally, about 10 minutes later, they come in and they go, Japanese approved all the, all the cat Bowser, Meowser stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a little known secret. I don't even know if I should say it. Probably shouldn't. That, uh, Charles's Charles's Mario Cat Mario stuff that they, they didn't they didn't approve the first one. Don't tell him. I'm serious because he's, he's very touchy. <laughs> I was just I was just so relieved, so relieved that I didn't have to do it again. 
the rest of Monday, I think I spent about another hour just doing some pickups on, you know, like short jumps, like <laughs> now throw bananas, you know. <laughs> oh, here's another interesting little tidbit for you. You guys ever played Mario Kart Wii? Yes. Yeah. 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 That was one of my favorites once upon a time. I mean, now they've gotten so much more sophisticated. But besides hating Rainbow Road, <laughs> one of the cool things that they did that I didn't find out about until I actually played the game myself was you can play as Bowser and you're winning and you're winning and you go, yay. And then he's in his cart at the end and he's all going, you know, like doing this number. And he's all like, you know. Well, every so often it'll go, <laughs> that was completely ad lib. I was I was in there. They go, you just won, and you're trying. You're just rubbing it in everybody's face. So I'm all going, doing, <laughs> and then I just got. I ran out of stuff, and I just went. <laughs> no idea they were going to use it. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, I'm just out, I'm just out of gas. <laughs> so they, so they, they, they put it in the game. That's one of the great surprises, you know. Awesome. Um, oh God, then uh, I think people also ask me about um, uh, Odyssey a lot because it's, it's recent. I got more stories about that. I'm gonna stop talking for a second. Let's have another question. Go ahead. So, has it occurred to you that amongst like the main Mario cast, you voice basically the only parent in that <laughs> entire universe? So, I was just curious, uh, you know, what sort of dad jokes or things does Bowser do to embarrass his son? Like, you remember, son, when I used to have to wipe your show? <laughs> I remember those days like yesterday. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I, I get people asking me parenting questions about Bowser. <laughs> this this weekend, I, it was, it's been like, do you think that Bowser's a good parent? I'm like, I think Bowser thinks he's a good parent. Uh, <laughs> Whether he actually is, I don't know. I, I think that he thinks he is. But uh, that, I have no idea how he would embarrass Bowser Jr. Besides going, sorry for your face. <laughs> <laughs> that was your mother's fault. <laughs> oh, no. That's why I keep stealing, you know, Peach. <laughs> this is your mother's fault. First thing I'm gonna do when I get home is slap your mom in the mouth. Oh, no, no, Miyamoto. <laughs> I don't know, because a Nintendo wrote it that way. It's, the thing is, this is what I keep telling people. They're like, what's it like to, you know, always lose? And I'm like, I don't always lose. Think about it. You get to those end things. Oh, here we go, right? You get to this. It's not a video. They're ready for this. <laughs> your ass about four times. <laughs> right? Then you go, I got the pattern figured out. <laughs> then you win. Bowser wins more. <laughs> so take that home with you. And, and, go tell Charles that. <laughs> go ahead. Right, you said, uh, you, uh, my question was going to be if you play the games you voice for, but clearly you do. Yeah, no, I haven't played all of them though. You know? So you said yet? I haven't even played. I haven't played Odyssey yet. Huh. I know, I know, I know. I hear. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yesterday you said that your favorite Game Boy score was Super Mario Strikers, because that was the first one you did. Well, I wouldn't say favorite. I, I'm fond of it because it was the first one I did, you know? My wife went out and bought a GameCube just for that. And then, yeah. And then what, five minutes later, we had to go out and buy a Wii. <laughs> because you know, Strikers was like the last game that came out of GameCube, I swear it was. I'm not sure if it was, but it sure seemed like it was. Because I mean, right away, turn around and it's like, oh, now they've got a new system. Oh, cool. We should get one of those. I go to Toys R Us, I stand in line at six o'clock in the morning for this thing. No, they don't give me game systems. Uh, so, uh, no, it's, um, the, uh, the, the disc would work in the Wii, though. So I should have, I, if I'd have known that there was going to be any kind of demand for it, I would have just kept my GameCube and autographed it or something. But we just goodwilled it. <laughs> my, my, my real question is going to be, out of all the, my real question is going to be, what's your favorite game that you played that you voiced? <sighs> So far, I think it's it's still a tie between the first Mario Kart Wii, the first kart game for Wii, uh, mostly because it was the first time I got to race with people not in the room, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. fun. You know, I've got like I got like my brother-in-law. You know, he's across town and stuff, and we're like, man, nah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's probably tied with Galaxy. I really loved Galaxy because it was kind of the first of of its kind for the Mario, you know, realm. It was all 3D-ish looking, and, it, and it, you know, it had bees climbing up walls and all this fun stuff, you know. But now, from watching the YouTubes, <laughs> the, I've been watching Jack Septic Guy play, uh, yeah, you guys know Jack? Top of the morning to you, ladies! <laughs> Love that guy. I can't go that high. It's like it's a good thing too because I can't go whoa and go. <laughs> anyway, so I've been watching some of the Odyssey videos and it looks insanely cool. That's all I know. And so until I play it, no, I haven't played that one. Anybody else want a question? Uh, okay, Green Dude, I saw you first. Uh, what if Bowser magically became a good guy? Hmm. What if Bowser magically became a good guy? Well, I think everybody would probably stop playing. <laughs> because everybody likes to just beat him. I don't know why. I, I think he's lovable and cuddly. Yeah, well, but spikes, yeah. Spikes are a bit of a problem, but you know, as long as you don't reach real uh, hard. I don't know. Uh, good guy? He thinks he's a good guy. Who's to you say know? he isn't? He's, uh, right! Who's, yeah. <laughs> Who's to say he isn't? Maybe he is. Maybe he's not. I mean, he was kind of a woman. never know inside story. Even he didn't know. Yeah. Until, that, yeah. until he gets all showtime. <laughs> um, so, with your long recording hours, how do you exercise good vocal health? Well... That's a, there's another story about me. <laughs> Narcissist, remember? <laughs> I found that out when I was in alcohol treatment. <laughs> oh, shock! Um, what I do is I try not to do anything damaging to begin with. I mean, caffeine's not good, but I do consume sometimes copious amounts of caffeine, especially this weekend, because, you know, these are things have been free all weekend. <laughs> Remember, mutant by a monster. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 115 milligrams. Um, but a lot of people uh, do serious warm-ups and stuff, and I've never been a warm-up guy. Uh, I've done a lot of, of live theater, including a lot of a lot of musicals. So I can sing, you guys. Uh, yeah, when you sing as Bowser, that doesn't work. Yeah. Bowser's all like, <laughs> It's a little different than, you know, singing as Billy Bigelow in Carousel or something. But um, I've, I always I always fight. I always fight the, the warm-ups. You know, it'll be an hour before curtain, 
And they're like, all right, everybody, warm-ups, warm-ups. And I'm all like, I don't want to go to warm-ups. Because I don't like doing scales. But I go and I do it anyway because I know that I need to stretch them out. So I do, I sing, it's fun. And then uh, for Bowser though, yeah. I walk in the studio, I'm like, as long as I've got four bottles of water sitting on the table, that get me going. And they'll play, sometimes they'll play a reference track from the last session I did, just to get it in my head again. And I, I, feel, I laugh every time. Cause I'm just standing there waiting. I've got cans on. And they're like, I'm like looking through the glass and usually I'm in this room at Bad Animals, it's the, it's the red room, is what they call it. They have a blue room and there's another color, I forget what it is, chartreuse or something, I don't know. But um, this, this room is also used for a lot of Foley work. So there's shelves of shoes and pans and all this weird stuff that they can sit there and make noise. You guys know what Foley is, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and so I'm just standing in there looking at all this stuff and then all of a sudden in my cans I hear me doing blown takes of stuff that just sound really bizarre and then laughing and I'm like oh yeah this is fun because <laughs> it is but to hear myself go like <laughs> and then just go <laughs> and then I go oh yeah okay now I know what I'm doing let's go and no warm-ups though I just I just do it and the longer I do it like say for a two-hour session the longer I go the better it gets it gets more painful, but it gets better because my vocal cords get all stretched and floppy. And, and I mean, I've got, it's not the largest, you know, voice box in the world, but it's got a lot of power in it. I've been in, I don't know, I've probably been in six different bands as lead singer. You know, I was almost famous once, not that close. But I had a 12 song souvenir out of that because me and this band, you know, we're recording these all these originals and we're so cute. And I used to have hair down too. Oh. oh, it was awesome. I have this great picture with Tommy Chong. Like, I'm all like. <laughs> but uh sorry, I digressed again. Um, I don't I don't do the warm-ups though for Bowser. That's the that's the cap on that story. If you don't stop me. I'll keep wandering forever. <laughs> you guys will find out that I'm really like kooky and kind of flighty. I'm sorry, why am I here? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, 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 right, 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 right. All right, let's, 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 somebody else, go ahead. Okay, so in yesterday's panel, you had mentioned that you kind of like flip through the script when you get it. Just yeah. Something. Real wacky. Anything really weird, yeah. Do you uh, have any particular examples of the real wacky that you could share? You know what that goes right back to? Meowser. Meowser <laughs> was Meowser was the most shocking, difficult thing that they threw at me, and I just I I literally stood there for like three or four minutes, and it doesn't sound like a long time. It's forever when you're standing in a room by yourself, looking through the glass at two producers. And you know the engineer's going. He's he's like you can't really see him, but he's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just all like, I, I'm getting to it. You know, hold on a second. <laughs> and then they'll be like, you ready? Hold on a second. All right, we're gonna roll on 25. Right, hold up a second. <laughs> I go, let me try something first. All right. Okay. So that's what you did. I experimented. I got it quick though. But that is the weirdest thing. Now, it really was shocking, a little shocking, the first time I went in there, because I had never done any serious voiceover work before. And so I go in there, and first of all, it was shocking to find a script. Um, then it was really bizarre to just look at it and look at the descriptions, because there's no words. You know, there's just descriptions. It, like I said, short jump, long jump. They'll tell you to do it again, but longer. And it goes over and over, give me three of those. Or give me three threes. So you're just sitting there making all these noises forever. And ever, and ever. The, you know what, that brings up something good. Well, I don't know how good it is. I mean, there's like 10 of you here, so we'll get this, we'll get this going. The, um, the way that I got this, somebody's gonna ask, how did you get the Bowser gig? 
So I'll tell you that story real quick. I was doing, I, I was doing uh, curb and stripe. Around here I noticed that you don't really have extruded curb and I imagine that's probably because of snow because if they're out plowing a parking lot, you can, you can bust extruded curb off the pavement. Whereas if it's poured in place, the snow plow will just bounce off of it. Um, we have a lot of extruded curb out in the West. And what it is, it's a big machine that poops out curb. You just shovel stuff into it. Anyway, that's, see, see what happens? <laughs> so I'm working for that company and I decide I'm gonna be a voiceover guy. Because I've always been able to do voices. How many times have you heard people do that? Yeah, I do voices really good. I'm going to be a voiceover guy. Well, you can be. It's a huge market. It takes some practice and it takes, you know, you should get some training because whether you think you need training or not, you need training. And uh, so I get, I get a website. Now, this is about 1999 or 2000, somewhere around there. And so the internet is just starting to go. I just got cable internet. I'm like, wow, I can download a song in like seven minutes. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm like, I'm on Napster, you know? <laughs> I've got like, it's, it's coming in from like 12 different places and it still takes seven minutes to download one song <laughs> or more. Could be 10 minutes. Now you do it and it's, a, it's one second. You know, you just pow. But anywho. So I get a website. I'm like, I'm gonna get a website and I'm gonna be a voiceover guy. Yeah, I got www.kennyjamesvoice or something. Well, that's what I have now. I don't remember, it was a, it was a different one then. And I'm, I'm gonna get a demo made. Well, I did go to a training. I went to, uh, I went to uh, Washington State University, experimental campus. That, there's where your voiceover lives. Experimental campus. I go there taking some lessons from this guy. His name is Nigel Lloyd Neal. Uh, he's a voiceover guy, he did a lot of commercial work. And uh, he was doing demos. So I pay this guy, does demo. It's like a really long demo, it's three minutes long, which is way too long in today's standards. Should be a minute or less. And uh, I get this demo and I'm all like, all right, I'm on my way. I'm not gonna have to do curve and stripe anymore. Well, nothing happened. And then some guy from Canada gets a hold of me. And he wants me to do uh, impersonations for answering machine things. So I'm, I'm grabbing a hold of stuff like, like, uh, hey, school, the phone's ringing, man. And it's like, I'm not answering it. <laughs> <laughs> Weird things like that. And I'm all Did like, you? all right, he's paying me like eight bucks a line for these things. And I'm all like, look at me, I'm on my way. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I started working for Suburban Propane. You guys have Suburban out here, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you do. It's nationwide. I was a service tech for 13 years. And I was at a job, Bainbridge Island in Washington, and my service partner and I are working on this lady's house. She hears me talking to him about the Scooby thing and all this other jazz. And she goes, I'm a part-time producer at Bad Animal Studio. So do you have a demo? And I was like, yeah, here's my, here's my official web address. You know, <laughs> you can go listen to it here. <coughs> well, she gives it to Wendy Wills at Bad Animal. She's the production manager. Well, Nintendo goes to Wendy oftentimes for things. And they, I did, God, well, it wasn't for <laughs> Nintendo, but I did some auditions for a Sly Cooper game that I did like four, I think I auditioned for four different characters. I didn't get any of them. <laughs> I don't remember which game it was. It was a long time ago. So, uh, one of them was a pirate guy. I thought I did really good. I was like, I nailed that. Huh? No. Yep, it was three. And I was all like, I nailed that. No. <laughs> That's another thing. If you want to get into voiceover, be prepared for a lot of no. And actually, you don't even get no. You just, you get nothing. You have to just, you have to go, hey, all right, I'm doing this audition. This is for you. You send it away, forget about it. Just forget about it. If you hear from them, you hear from them. Don't sit there and go, I really wish I had that. But anyway, where, where was I again? Anyway, don't be quiet. <laughs>
<laughs> I, uh, yeah, I was, so we were working in a house in Bainbridge, thank you. And uh, Wendy Wills sends me the Sly Cooper auditions and then there was something else that she sent me, I don't remember what it was. And then I get an email that says, here's an audition for Bowser. And I was like, Bowser, the Nintendo Bowser. And then, yeah. Well, this was, this was not too long, I don't think, after, um, uh, oh geez, what was that? Uh, what's the one where he was talking? I, I just, oh, Sunshine. Oh, Sunshine. I don't know why that just popped right up. Well, it wasn't mine. Uh, I think that was Scott Burns. He was before me. Scott, Scott lives over in the Seattle area too. I had lunch with him one day, it was fun. But I didn't have the nerve to ask him why they recast Bowser. Um, I didn't, I don't wanna hurt his feelings or anything. I mean, I think he was Bowser for four years. But uh, that's what they sent me for reference tracks, was the Sunshine stuff with him going, you Mario, you ruined my vacation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, all right, I'll do that. Mario, you ruined my vacation. Only mine was more girdly. So I, two weeks later, I get, a, I get an email that says, you, you got that job. And I'm all like, what job? <laughs> <laughs> the Nintendo thing. And I was all like, oh my god, I'm going to be so rich. <laughs> that's, another, that's another thing about video game actors. You don't get really rich. <laughs> no, no, no residuals out there for that. Um, so I, I flipped out. My, my first session was for uh, Super Mario Strikers, pretty short one, and then I did a, I did both uh, Mario Kart Wii and uh, Galaxy in the same session. I recorded both of those games in the same session. And ever since then, it's just been like every time they call, luckily for me, well not luckily really, I like to fly, but I live right across Puget Sound from the studio, so I get on a ferry, it's an hour ride on the ferry and walk up to 4th Ave and I'm at the studio. Um, let me have another question. Sure, go ahead. So you, you've talked a lot about uh, the different types of games you've done, whether, whether it's uh, Strikers or whether it's uh, you know uh, the, uh, Mario Kart or things like that. Do you have any kind of different preparation for the type of game it is, whether it's sports or racing or, or platform or something like that? Well, yeah, I think it's what, what it is is I try to get it in my head. It is slightly different because if if it's racing. I know there's going to be a lot of bouncing around and, and uh, falling. He seems to fall a lot in racing because you, well, you, you run off the track. So I have to do a lot of those. It's, so it's a little different. It, it's kind of a... I think that I do a little bit shorter, sharper sounds in the racing games than I do in the other ones. The other ones are more, more like he's moving. You know, I, I remember the first time I went into the studio, and they were like, all right, you're stomping around. Because I remember they were like, he drops down. This was for strikers. Because that's all he ever does in that. He drops down. Bam. And they're like, he lands and he spews fire everywhere. And so, and so they're going to take like four steps. But what do I do? I do this. I go. <laughs> I'm stomping my feet. You can't do that in studio. <laughs> it doesn't come across well. They can hear it. <laughs> so you learn. I learned to... I learned that on his big, I'm heavy Bowser movements, to just, I just move my body, not my feet. So you come with it, you get a so you, Then they put in the of his feet. But, so the, the difference between, say, a platform where I'm walking around stomping things and stuff and, and the racing things is that I just try to sound heavier. It's the short, shortest answer I can give you. And that, for me, was a really short answer, as you've probably noticed. <laughs> Good. Um, do you have any legacy cartoons in your demo reel? My demo is all this. I think that one of the, one of, no, that was my, that was an old, well, it was an old character demo. The only thing I, I can think of that sounded like anybody else was, uh, was that, uh, was that Bulldog Butch? Or was it his son that was Butch? But there, there was something that I did in there, it's all like, it's hard growing up with a, a delicate complexion. And I was like, I don't know who they even that sounds like, but it sounded familiar. And then there was a, there was a British character that I did on there that, was, that sounded familiar too. And I think that, I think I borrowed from, uh, 
uh, back in the Bullwinkle days, a British colonel or, you know, whatever he is, you know, I remember one time when I was doing this and that. But um, I, also, I also did, there's a, a fake Geico commercial that I, that I did, I used on part of my video that I, I did a take that was normal. Well, for me it was normal. <laughs> and then I was like, let me do that again, but I want to do it as Arthur. <laughs> so I pulled this, I pulled it whole, it's almost a, a one minute commercial, I think. And I did, I did the whole thing as Dudley Moore's Arthur. <laughs> it's like, you can save a lot of money with a guy, Cal. Yeah, it's better than stealing pens from work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> So you see, I have I have a larger range than just. <laughs> What's next? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, what was probably the hardest time? You, what was probably the hardest voucher voice you had to do in the past? All of them. <laughs> yeah. So what game was like the hardest? That would have been. <laughs> Here we go again. Which game is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Three D World. Three D World was the hardest. I mean, they're all difficult, and I can tell you that when I did Odyssey, that the only reason that it was that it may be tied as far as difficulty was because I was involved in a production of Evita at the time. Yes. Uh, and I'm 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 Magalby. You know, I don't have I wasn't playing you know Che or some big thing. Actually, I wanted to I, I wanted to play the president, but they wouldn't let me. They cast somebody else. Um, I was playing Magaldi. Magaldi's the tango singer, right? He's like, on this night of a thousand stars, you know. Well, I'm doing this thing. Everybody in the cast is getting sick one after another. We actually, opening night, we had to actually cancel because our lead guy couldn't sing. His wife, though, luckily for him, is an MD. So she gives him like 500 milligram, milligrams of prednisone. The next day he was like. <laughs> and I go, what's the matter with you? He goes, I'm so hyper. <laughs> and I'm like, does prednisone do that too? He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're off in the wings. We're off in the wings. He's fixing to make an entrance and he keeps messing with me. And I'm like, quit it. And he goes, I can't. <laughs> it was hilarious. And then he has to walk out there and do one of these really lilting high voice things while Evita's standing freeze frame, you know. Um, but the reason it was difficult and it's probably tied with Meowser is because of doing Evita, I had the recording session for Odyssey during that run. I recorded on a Wednesday. I have a show to do on Friday. So I thought, oh, good Lord, I'm going to be going. On this night of a thousand stars, you know, <laughs> that's where the resiliency of my voice comes into play because I do a two-hour session for Odyssey, and then day and a half later, I'm on stage singing Magaldi, and it worked. So that would that would tie it. What's next? Go ahead, you've been trying really hard. <laughs> What's your favorite type of pizza? I like uh, anything with, that's super meaty. Um, I'm sorry for all you pineapple people, but no pineapple. <laughs> and I'm also sorry, no mushrooms. I can tolerate, I can tolerate almost anything else. But yeah, meat lovers. Meat lovers, yeah. Uh, you know what? If you if you don't tell me that they're on there, I, I might not notice. Uh, yeah, yeah. As long as they're small little pieces. That's like with mushrooms, though. I can't eat mushrooms if they're little pieces, not those big goopy slices. Stop Blech. Up at it. Uh, you go ahead. You were you were trying real hard too. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you could have any power up from the Mario games in real life, which would be and why? Huh? Huh? I want to be, I want to be Meowser. I love Meowser, dude. I thought that was the coolest thing ever, man. He's all, he's all climbing up. 
and he's got that big ass tail <laughs> and the claws and just that cute face. <laughs> I love that. So, be honest with you. Sorry, that was the idiot. Like, so I can sweat. Get out of here, Jack. <laughs> Go ahead. So I remember uh, yesterday at your panel, I asked for a two minute roll. <laughs> I remember you said, I forget what it was, but I remember it was this little dragon that read. Oh, yeah. I remember, how the hell did you get that roll? Um, that was through a casting site. You oh. know, I, I always look for character work. He's talking about yesterday, I was talking about, um, somebody asked about other roles or. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah like what, what, little what strange things. Yeah. Little green dragon named Zingo for a, a mega church in, I think, North Carolina, North or South Carolina, one of the Carolinas. And uh, he's a little green dragon that reads short Bible stories to children. So he was, hi, you know, hi kids, I'm Zingo. I'm going to tell you the story today about, you know, some guy in the Bible. <laughs> He looked, he looked really cool, you know? I was all like, all right, that, what, let's see what he sounds like. He sounds like this. He's a little one. He's a little guy. So I, this, is, this is a church that has apparently 35,000 members. Jesus. Wow. Over seven locations. There's one near you. <laughs> but uh, no, that, yeah, then you're right. That was kind of odd. So what's next? God, you've been doing If you were trapped in a room with a bear, would you do your Bowser imper like impersonation to try to scare the bear away? Yeah, you know, one of the one of the tips, you know, with bears and wildcats is to make yourself as big as possible and I guess to try to roll like Bowser, you know. And they'll go, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you're stupid, I'm gonna eat you. I'm gonna eat your face. <laughs> What's that? Go ahead. Um out of curiosity, um, well, one, have you ever met Shigeru Miyamoto? And two, um, have anyone in Nintendo ever asked you or Charles, like, you know, maybe like creative input for like a Mario game? Not yet, and not yet. <laughs> no, so far they haven't, uh, they haven't invited me to go to Japan or anything, so. Aww. I know, and the producers, the Nintendo of America producers always tell me, they're like, oh, the Japanese love your Bowser. They love Bowser. And I'm all like, why won't they have me over for tea or something? <laughs> I like sushi, you know? Go to Japan and eat California roll, right? <laughs> I like spicy tuna. <laughs> but no, I've never met him. I'd love to. Yeah. Because I think that I think it would be so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, I did at uh, the session for Odyssey. They had me on uh, probably Skype. Uh, they had a laptop sitting. I had the, the mic stand and I was standing up. And on a little table, they had waters and a laptop. And I just kept looking at the laptop. I'm like, I don't know why that's there. It's, it's no matter, I don't care. Well, it turns out that they were watching me in Japan. It was probably, you know, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning for me or noon. It's probably two o'clock in the morning there the next day, you know, or something. It's weird. And uh, I didn't know that. And eventually I'm all like, so what do you get? Because they've got all the producers have laptops open and stuff. And these, this last producer that I work with speaks really pretty good Japanese. So at one point, he's talking to me on the talkback. And he's like, yeah, just hold on a second. And he kept his finger on the talkback button. And then he starts speaking Japanese. And I was all like, who are you talking to? <laughs> he's like, I'm talking to the guys in Japan. And I was all like, are they watching me? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, so then now I'm on it. Now, now I'm all like, <laughs> that go. <laughs> That's what it looked like from that direction. I, was, <laughs> I started making faces and stuff, you know, I was like, apparently they got a big kick out of it. When I was done, I went out, I was in the, in the control room and I could see them on that laptop and, and they're all like, Oh, thank you, thank you. And I was all like, okay, yeah, arigato and all that jazz. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I, they haven't had me in Japan yet. Already? Yeah. I'm not done talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's, I'll try to be quicker. Let's get good. Uh, do, you, do you do anything different with the dry Bowser voice, or do they use the same recordings? 
Um, you know, they'll, they told me, you know, it's dry bowels where he's all bones and stuff, and I just try to dry it out a little bit. It goes back to the do it again but wetter. Yeah. Well, do it again but drier. <laughs> you know, so instead of that, uh, instead of the, you know, because that sounds goopy, it's more of a, it sounds dry. <laughs> it's it's whatever you can make of it because if they don't like it they'll just tell you to do it again. Anyway. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, favorite game overall other than uh, Mario? <laughs> oh, uh, you know what I really? Oh man, favorite of all time except you know in, out of the Mario. Wow, dude, that's a really intense question. Right now, at least recently, it's been Mad Max. I've been I. I've been lost in there, just driving around like a crazy person, beating the crap out of people. <laughs> Love that. Um, also, I'm really huge in, into uh, Star Trek and Star Wars and stuff. And uh, if some of you may have seen my mashup shirt the other day, it was so cool. I've got this Iron Maiden Star Wars mashup where it's, you know, the the trooper pose that yeah, Andy uh, I, does. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a stormtrooper. And it says, you know, Galactic Empire, the trooper. It's the same pose with a galactic flag. Awesome. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Because it's VR. Well, I'm playing in VR. And you get to play with, you know, four, three other people, and you're on the bridge. So, yeah, look up Bowser's Voice. Capital B, capital B. That's my gamer tag on, on uh, PS4. Or PlayStation Network. Uh, good. Uh, what's your current video game? Um, and also, are you a fan of Mega Man? Uh, you know, I've, I haven't done anything with Mega Man since back in the old days. Um, so I, I know nothing of it now. Um, the first game first game was Strikers. Um, first game I ever played, though, was Pong. I go back, I'm 55 years old, so I go back before video games. You know, it was when you went into the bowling alley or whatever, pinball machines or nothing. That was it. And they were clunky pinball machines. They didn't have digital displays. They had they had numbers that went you know, and cut clack and bang, crack. They were ugly and weird and they smelled like ozone. Ozone and oil. Uh, let's see if we can grab another Oh yeah! Whoopee! Uh final question for me. Can I get a hug? Yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 I can get a picture. Hey. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm sorry. Okay, let me. One more. Okay, come on. Okay, so you're talking about saying stuff like that and like what is Bowser saying? Uh, do you, are there any things like a rock song or something you can do as Bowser? Real quick? No, and I can't even imagine him. Well, no. <laughs> it's, so, it's so difficult to carry a tune as Bowser. Really, really, really hard. <laughs> no! Oh, yeah, maybe Brian Johnson. Yeah. Not the, uh, the other guy. She has an announcement to make. All right, guys. So. I need you guys to exit through that back door. See the back door? Yep. You guys are exiting that back door. I have to have everyone.